Okay, so in today's video, we're going to discuss the difference between what is HIV and then what is AIDS. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's start with, with some information about the HIV virus. So, you know, what is HIV? Well, here is a picture. Here, This is the virus. You can see it has some strands of RNA on the inside. One of the red circles is labeled reverse transcriptase. That's a very special enzyme that the HIV virus possesses, and we'll see its job in a little bit. But HIV stands for human immunodeficiency virus. Human because it infects humans. Immunodeficiency because it weakens our immune system, and we'll explain how in just a little bit. And then it's a virus. Now a virus is a parasite that lives inside of our cells. That's what an intracellular parasite is. And it's in the category of a retrovirus. Now these are RNA viruses that contain reverse transcriptase and turn their RNA backwards into DNA. And we'll see how it does that in a little bit. As far as some characteristics of the HIV virus, first of all, the HIV virus only attaches to and really infects a type of white blood cell known as a T cell. And that's really important because T cells are the cells that will send signals to activate your body's immune system whenever they detect an intruder, like a virus or a bacteria. Here's a picture of a T cell, the big blue cushy thing is the T cell and all those little golden yellow dots are, are multiple HIV viruses that have attached to this one particular T cell. And so as time passes, the HIV virus actually destroys these T cells and the amount of T cells that the person has begins to dwindle. So an uninfected individual will have anywhere from 500 to 1600 T cells in every cubic millimeter of blood. But when a person is diagnosed with the disease known as AIDS, they have less than 200 of these T cells per cubic uh, millimeter of blood. And so eventually our immune system becomes compromised. Our immune system is greatly reduced. Therefore, opportunistic infections such as vi uh, other viruses and bacteria could actually make the person very, very ill to the point where it could take their life. So how is HIV contracted? You know, this pie graph right here comes from the Centers of Disease Control based on the year 2007, and it really shows the two high-risk activities very well. Number one is is sexual activity. The biggest portion of the graph, making up 52.88% of the graph, is through homosexual male sex. MSM in the key stands for men having sex, sex with men. And then the next biggest part of the graph, representing about 32%, is through heterosexual sex. And then the next biggest part of the graph, 11.62%, is labeled IDU, and this stands for intravenous drug users. So there are various drugs that require the drug to be injected into a vein, and so quite, frank, uh, quite frequently, drug users will inject one person with one needle, and then they inject multiple people using the same needle, and, uh, and that's one way to spread the virus. So if we look at some of the low risk ways in which the HIV virus may be contracted, you know, if a woman is pregnant, there are antiviral medications that she can take to help keep the virus at such a low amount that the chance of it pa being passed on to her unborn child is very, very low, but there is a small chance that it still could happen. When, if a woman is HIV positive and she's recently given birth, then uh, because the virus has been found in breast milk, then she would be advised not to breastfeed her child. And this, is a, this was a problem, especially in the 1980s, before we really understood how HIV was spread, but there's countless incidences where people were, uh, people had contracted the HIV virus 
through, uh, through receiving some sort of blood product, whether it was a blood transfusion or plasma or hemophiliacs receiving treatment for hemophilia. But with today's improved screening methods, this problem has virtually been eliminated. So let's look at the HIV life cycle. How does the HIV virus go about replicating and infecting? Well, if we break this down into a few steps, here is my white little blob in the picture. This is a, a T cell. It's a type of a white blood cell. So here's a T cell. Now the HIV virus will only attach to receptors that are found on T cells. So here comes the HIV virus in yellow and it just attached to a receptor on the surface of a T cell. So what happens next is the host cell, the T cell, will actually draw the virus inside. Notice how the caps had dissolved, thus exposing the RNA of the virus and that red circle labeled RT for reverse transcriptase. So reverse transcriptase is an enzyme. And what this enzyme directs is the, the process of transcription in reverse. Now, normally, the route of transcription is where DNA is converted into RNA. But this is called reverse transcriptase because it does reverse transcription. So what happens is reverse transcriptase will take the RNA of the virus and in a backwards transcription process create DNA of the virus. So what happens to that DNA of the virus? Well, the DNA of the virus will actually integrate into the host cell's DNA and form what's called a provirus, this combination of host DNA and viral DNA. Well, now what happens that the HIV viral DNA has integrated into the host, host cell's DNA? Well, the viral DNA will actually recreate a bunch of viral RNA, HIV RNA, as it, you see it's created, and then it exits the nucleus and attaches to a ribosome of the host cell. Well, you should know at this point that ribosomes build proteins, and viruses are big balls of protein. So now the ribosomes have the instructions to make new viruses, which are then released to then infect another cell. So here we see a third ribosome creating a third HIV virus, which is then released to infect more cells. And ultimately, eventually, this weakens the T cell to the point where it is destroyed. And this is why, over time, the amount of T cells in the person's blood begin to drop and drop and drop. Here's a picture of a, of a T cell with about a dozen HIV viruses budding out and being released to the outside world. Actually, not to the outside world, but to the outside of this particular cell. And so what is then AIDS if we now understand what HIV is? HIV is a virus. What is AIDS? Well, the HIV virus causes the condition or the disease known as AIDS. And AIDS stands for the Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Acquired because you have to acquire the virus and it makes your immune system deficient. And so the diagnosis of AIDS is typically made when you know, a person with HIV is seeing a doctor for regular physical exams. And eventually, when the T cells are measured in the person's blood, when the T cells are less than 200 T cells per cubic millimeter of blood. Earlier, I showed you that an uninfected individual has anywhere from 500 to 1600 T cells per cubic millimeter of blood. Now it might take years, it could take years for the normal amount to kind of dwindle to below 200 T cells per cubic millimeter of blood, at which time the person would be diagnosed with AIDS. But a lot can happen 
in those years that the person's T cells might be dropping. The person might not even know they have the virus, and so they may continue with the risky behaviors that were previously mentioned. And another way to be diagnosed with the condition of AIDS is even though they might have higher than 200 T cells per cubic millimeter of blood, the person just might be showing multiple symptoms and multiple infections that you see from the list here in the photograph and in the descriptions. You know, so what are some ways to prevent the spread of the HIV virus and to uh, hopefully prevent the condition, the syndrome known as AIDS? Well, really it comes down to sexual health and understanding how HIV is transmitted. Knowing that HIV is transmitted through unprotected sex, I want to mention that abstinence is the only 100% effective form of birth control. And here we have pictures of purity rings where some people may make a pledge not to have premarital sex until they are, until they are married. For those people who are sexually active, latex condoms are the only forms of birth control that not only, not only protect against pregnancy, but also prevent the spread of STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, such as HIV. And of course, be tested. Uh, it's really important if you, you look in the picture, there's a website here for more information, but you can be tested anonymously through various clinics, or you could also, of course, see your family doctor. And then for intravenous drug users, that was the other high-risk activity. Of course, if you have a loved one who uh, you are concerned with their risky behavior, encourage treatment, uh, encourage rehab facilities. And now this might be a little, you know, controversial right here, but some healthcare facilities, some community outreach programs might exist in your area that actually encourage needle exchanges. The logic being, well, if they're going to use intravenous drugs, at least they might be able to use them safely by using clean needles every time. So you just have to check your area to see if in your area needle exchanges are are offered. Of course, I do want to stress, however, uh, the, the, you know, the encouragement of your loved one into treatment facilities or rehab facilities. You know, before I finish, I want to mention the AIDS quilt, because I think it's a wonderful way that's been used over the years to raise awareness and education uh, involving the AIDS epidemic that we currently face. So here's a piece of the AIDS quilt. You can see it's been decorated to remember a loved one. And what happens is the AIDS quilt panels are sewn together with other panels. So here are eight panels sewn together. Well, now what? You can see the eight panels are bundled together with others. Eight times four, here are 32 panels that have been sewn together. And these panels travel the world and are used to raise awareness and educate and to remember loved ones who've lost their lives due to their struggles with HIV and AIDS. You know, currently there are tens of thousands of panels that have been created as part of the AIDS quilt. So again, just a wonderful way to remember lost lives and loved ones who have struggled through their, uh, through their infection with the HIV virus. So there you have it. If you want to try this practice quiz, go ahead and pause the video. And if you're in my class, I can check your answers before or after school one day and to see how you did. So go ahead and pause the video, and I hope you found this helpful.